St. Luke chapter 16, verse 14 says, The Pharisees, who were lovers of money, heard all these things, and they ridiculed him. That's the amen to the reading of God's word. This morning, we're going to continue to teach and preach. We are in part two of our World Changers series. Uh, today, simply from the topic, Under New Management, part four, hashtag 104. Come on, put your hands together and give God some praise. In our day and time, I think it's so significant that we spend as much time as we possibly can leaning in to hear what it is that God is saying to us. I think oftentimes we spend a lot of our time trying to hear something new. We try to hear something new. We try to come up with something new. We try to, we try to come up with something new. And in our attempt to hear something new, oftentimes we mishandle the enduring. We mishandle the enduring. In, in other words, we mishandle or we overlook and sometimes outright abuse the enduring. What, what do I mean by the enduring? It is, it is those lasting truths. It is the basics. That There are some things that, that are requisite for you and I being children of God. There are some things that are just simply the foundation of our walk with God. We can never get to the place where we get tired of hearing about praise and prayer and worship and fellowship and giving and soul winning. Those things are just a part of us being the people of God. They, they, they are the basics. So oftentimes in our walk with God, we will mishandle and even abuse the enduring or the basic all in a pursuit to hear something fresh or hear something new. But I believe that there is a process to learning. There's a process to learning and actually getting a handle on something. I believe in order for us to learn something and something to really stick to our ribs the way that I believe that God desires for it to stick to our ribs, it's a process. Somebody say it's a process. It's a pro You just can't hear something one time and then think that you got it. You can't hear something one time and you got it down in your heart and your soul. You just can't hear something once a year or once every decade and think you got it. But no, I believe that there is a process to learning and in order for us to be everything that God desires for us to be I believe that we must be willing to endure the process we got to be willing to endure the process I, I, I love what the late Hall of Fame coach uh, John Wooden he won 10 national championships with the UCLA Bruins I love what he says about the process he says the eight laws look at it, he says the eight laws of learning are explanation demonstration, imitation, repetition, we got to repeat it and repeat it and repeat it, repetition, 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 it is the eight laws of learning, we ought to, we ought to get, get explain something, somebody ought to explain the thing to us, and this is what I try to do every time we gather, I, I try to explain the word of God, then we, then we put the word into practice, so why pastor ask us to stand, because it's biblical, why, why does pastor ask us to put our hands together and clap, because it's biblical, why, why do we give, why do we serve, because it's biblical, that's a demonstration, then, then you ought to have some some imitation. In other words, there ought to be somebody in your life that, that, that let their light so shine in such a way. There's something that's on them. It's something about their walk. It's something about their desire and their passion for the things of God that causes you to want to imitate them, not imitate them to be them. No, we've gotten so, this, so messed up. But in the body of Christ, Paul says, follow me as I follow Christ. He says, in a real sense, imitate me and be with me. And then there, there's a, there we ought to repeat. There's a repetition. We ought we ought to repeat a thing. And then he says repetition. Then he says repetition and repetition. In other words, this is the process of learning. If we're going to learn a thing, we got to be able to submit ourselves to this process. And Wooden goes on to say, listen to me closely, the goal with so much repetition is to create a correct habit that can be produced instinctively under great pressure. Whenever it is, Lord have mercy. Whenever it is that we that we continue to repeat and continue to repeat what we've been explained and repeat what's been demonstrated and repeat what we what we what we're imitating and what has been displayed and repeat and repeat and repeat under pressure, we can in instinctively be able to do some things without even thinking about it. And, and so, what am I saying? Whenever it is, I, I, I can't I can't pull from a thing or I can't I can't walk out a thing if I haven't put a thing down in my heart. 
But whenever it is that trouble come, whenever it is that trials come, whenever it is that situations come, I'm able to do some things without even thinking about it. My flesh told me to cuss you out. Oh, but because I've been in the word, because I've been I've been repeating and repeating and rinsing and repeating and rinsing and repeating. Oh, only thing come out of me is you better be glad I'm saying. Oh, only thing that come out of me is just simply saying, oh, oh, you know I love God. God bless you. Anybody ever given somebody a, a God bless you and you know you wanted to, you want to do anything but bless them. But because, because you were, you because there was something down on the inside of you, you're able to do it. And here, I believe this is what, this is why the, this is why the, the, the church as a whole, I believe is so frail and so anemic and so, and so, and so, so fragile and why the world is, is just tearing us out the frame because of the fact that we try to always want something different or want something new and we have not mastered the basics we have not mastered the basics and here whenever I master the basics and whenever I flow from that and grow from that and walk with that can I tell you that God can use me in the extraordinary I believe that the word of God needs to be needs to be grabbed and needs to be grabbed to the place to where I'm grabbing what it is that God is saying I'm grabbing this life this is a life giving word it's a life giving word it gives me life and it gives me light that's why I need the word that's why I'm coming to church to talk to you because I need the light to shine the brightness of the light of God on my situation I need to be able to light up my path so I can know what to do and where to go the word of God is very is very intentional on taking us from where we are to where God desires for us to be and I'm trying to be intentional as well in this particular in this particular series because I don't care how long you've been walking with God the truth does not change I, I said the truth does not change. I, I don't care how long you've been with God. Jesus was still born of a virgin. <laughs> I, I don't care how long you've been walking with God. I, on the third day, he still got up. Come on, the story does not change. It, it, the story is the story. And I don't care how long you've been hearing it. And I don't care how long this is something that's been, been explained to you. And you've heard it and heard it and heard it. I need to be able to posture myself in a way. Listen to me closely. Because mature believers understand this. That whenever God is giving me an an old principle or an old revelation it is something that God is desiring to do new in my life it's new illumination and new application I can hear for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son and no matter how many times you hear that no matter how many times you go to that well God gives you something fresh every time and it's an old truth but it's a new illumination it's an old truth oh but it's a new word and God is trying to say something to us fresh so it shows my immaturity when I say, oh, I know this already. I heard this already. Pastor talk about this every year. And here it shows my, it shows my immaturity. We try to be so mature. Where, where grandma said, you slip hanging, you slip hanging, baby. You slip hanging. We, we, can, see, we can see you slip hanging because here it shows, our, it shows our immaturity. So it's not about being redundant or, or being stale or being boring. Here we got to be to the place, I've said it already, to where I've been with the Lord. I don't know where y'all been. I, I, I just, I just, I just, I'm just I'm just going to I'm just got a sneaky suspicion that y'all been with the Lord as well. But I, I've been with the Lord. I've been, I've been in his presence. And because of the fact that I've been in his presence it ought to be it ought to be a little bit of residual on me that's supposed to get off on you whenever I slave over a hot bible and I prepare myself in the word of God then then I'm to be able to give the word of God in such a way that where it helps you and it equips you whenever I soak in God's presence and soak in the word can I tell you that it ought somebody around me ought to know it somebody around me ought to know it and, I, and I'm telling you that God desires for us to grow from where we are and to be the people of God I, I love I love what I love what some one says they said it's a repetition is the mother of all learning and it's, it's when you it's when you continue to do it come on some of us some of us we, we, we go home this afternoon some of us got a little longer to travel and we get on 295 or get on 95 and we don't even know how we got to the exit we just know we just driving and driving and driving and driving and we just trying to figure out what was I paying attention this whole time your mind started wondering and all anybody ever been driving and trying to figure out what well, dog where, where was I at just now that's called repetition and can I tell you the same way we drive and the same way we go and know how to go to the cupboard and get my juice and get my this and get my that that's the same thing we ought to do with our walk with God we ought to do it so much that it become that the supernatural becomes natural Lord Lord have mercy I, I, I love it the, the professionals, the professionals call it something like this. They call it deliberate practice. They, they call it deliberate practice. It, it is the art of deliberate practice is this. Listen to me closely. It is, be, they, they believe that being a prodigy with God-given talent is a myth. 
being, being a prodigy. We love, we love that when people like, let's take Sister Jerry who's here, Sister Jerry who plays, and y'all play. Y'all be like, oh, I wish I could play. I wish I could play like her. I wish I could do that. I wish I could do that. I want to play. I want to play. I want to play. But because I, I promise you, I promise you, even, even if God put that desire in her, her coming, her being able to play the way she plays comes from repetition. It comes from her practicing hours and hours and hours. And I always use you in connection class and say that you have been playing a lot very long. Has it been seven years, eight years, something like that? Right before, right before she came to Jacksonville, her father, who's a pastor up in Detroit, needed a musician. And she said, well, I'm, I'm kind of smart. I'm going to teach myself how to play. She, she didn't know that God gave her that desire and she was learning how to play. Not for Detroit. God bless you, Mr. Mr. Dree Daddy. God bless you, Pastor Dree Daddy. But, but she wasn't learning for, for Dree Daddy. She was learning for truth and love. Back again. <laughs> Not too Anyway, not too. Anyway, she, she would learn. She would, and, but, 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 but people sit there and they play and they play and they do these different things and the drummers and the bass and, the, and all of our all of our ministrels on those on those beautiful instruments over there. They just don't they just don't roll out of bed and do that. But no, it's deliberate practice. And what what am I saying that here? Just as she plays and just as I minister and just as you do what you do, you're only going to get to a, a place or excel in a place the more that you do it. So so here God. God does give us gifting but it's my responsibility to discover that gifting it's my responsibility to develop that gifting and then it's my responsibility to deploy that gifting God can put it in you all you all he desires to but if you don't discover it if you don't work that thing and don't deploy that thing oh you're just going to be another individual they're just sitting on their morals and sitting on what they have but I just believe in this art called deliberate practice listen to what they say they say only only one only one who devotes themselves to the to a cause with their whole strength and soul can be a true master only one who devotes themselves to a true cause and with, oh, with, with the, all their strength and all of their soul can be a true master. I've, I've talked to you this before because they call it, they call it the mastery. It's a mastery demands. It demands all of a person. They, they call it the 10,000 hour rule. The 10,000 hour rule just simply means that a person that, that, that does something, applies something to one's life, they, they only can become world class in their field when they deliberately do a thing for 10,000 hours again and again and again and again. The point, the point I'm trying to make is if that be the case when it comes to us being artists, if that's the case when it comes to us doing all these other things, 10,000 hours I'm studying, 10,000 hours I'm reading, 10,000 hours I'm I'm operating 10,000 hours. I'm working these transactions 10,000 hours. I'm filing these folders 10,000 hours. Now, now, now because of repetition now because of me continuing to do a thing now I can master what it is that I'm doing. What, what is pastor trying to say? I'm trying to say that God has called all of us not to be mastered. Oh man, master the word. No, 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 no. But let the word master us. Lord have mercy. I, I'm to get to the place that where I don't feel like I got just such a handle on everything that I'm a master of the text but I need to let the text I need to let the text master me oh and that's the purpose of this entire series and the purpose of whatever it is that I'm teaching I, I'm strategic and I'm repetitive and I continue to say the same thing again and again and again because I would like to believe you can hear me one time and get it but I just know that's just not the case. I just know that's not the truth. But I, I, have to, I have to be really intentional to try to continue to say the same thing without becoming boring and becoming redundant. But here it is. I'm going to tell you once again, the purpose of this series, it is just simply to maintain a culture of generosity. I used to say several years ago, the purpose of me teaching this is to create a culture of generosity. But now here it is seven years later and you, you have stepped up to the plate and you've done what you need to do, truth and love. So I, my point is just to maintain a culture of generosity so we can be generous towards the things of God. I also, I told you last week, the point of this series is to encourage our present tithers. Isn't that right? Encourage our present tithers. I know, I know you've heard this again. I know you've heard this, but you need to hear this. I know, I know you heard it, but you need to hear it. I want to encourage our present time, encourage you to keep on going. You could be sowing your finances and sowing your resources and see nothing change. You still can be in the place of where financially you are, you are in duress. You, financially, you are without. Financially, you are simply struggling. But the point that God desires for all of us to catch when I am consistent in my giving is keep on being consistent in my giving because when I continue to be consistent, consistent I'm literally opening up a portal I'm opening up a door for God to be able to step into my life and to be able to get involved in my finances but that can't happen captain 
if you're not consistent. You can't, you can't give it just one time or give it just two times or give it like six times and think things going to change. I told one brother several years ago, one brother several years ago, he had gotten saved and he had said, all right, I'm going to try this tithing thing and all that stuff. And this, this was a street brother. He had been out there for a while doing his thing and all that. And he was like, oh, pastor, man, I, 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 I'm tired two weeks in a row and I'm still broke. I still, I'm still behind on my child support. I'm still all this kind of stuff. I said, bro, it don't work that way. It don't work that way, bro. You still got to take care of your support and it's gonna, you're going to be broke for a little while because it's a process. I say a process. Isn't it amazing? We want this old macamay kind of known as macamay. We stick it in, stick a little something in the envelope, and then all of a sudden we want to get a million dollars. When you've been out there blowing, you want drunk more money than you gave. Lord have mercy. You want smoked up more money than, and now all of a sudden you want to come to the house of the Lord, and now you want, now, now you want everything to, that, 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 that doesn't work. That, it doesn't, it doesn't work that way, bro. Don't work that way, ma'am. You got, you got, you got to be consistent. Say consistent. Yeah, because it, so I want to encourage our 40, our 43 strong. I want to encourage our first, what more 43 strong get? <laughs> and the 43 strong, the 40, I want to encourage you to keep on doing what you need to do. And I also want to engage new tithers. I want you who are listening to me and listening to me and sitting on the edge of your seat, edge of your heart. And you said, all right, preacher, I want to hear what you got to say. All right, pastor, I want to hear what you got to say. And I want to engage you because with the 43 are strong, but then we also got 57 weak. The 43 are strong, but we got 57 weak. <laughs> they, they, they are individuals who are not consistent in their giving. And so the, the, the point, you see, you see, just stick with me. Don't quit me now. Stay with me. And you'll, and you'll understand the importance of our giving. This lesson today is so cold-blooded. I promise you, if you come to this, to this lesson, to these verses of Scripture, it'll change the way you see giving to your local church for the rest of your life. I, I promise. That's a, that's a big statement. That's a, that's a heavy statement. But I promise you, if you stay with me, I promise you it will. So I'm looking for the 57 week. <laughs> Not not the W E E K, but the W E A K. Fifty seven week. What 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 do I mean? Because there there are fifty seven percent of Truth and Love Ministry that come and enjoy all this good air, and y'all always complain about the air, and I love it. I just love it because it was a time in here it used to be hot in here. That's why that's why Sister Wilkins why why we why we we raise it up so low, put turn down so low because it was a time that where we, the air wasn't working right, and everybody was oh it's so hot. I'm in the pass out. And now I'll be like, now I'll be like, turn it all the way below, negative below, sub zero. I want icicles hanging from the ears because, because you're gonna, can, I, can, I, can I tell you to hear? Here, you, you enjoy all that good air. And don't ever get nothing like, like, like the air for free. Uh, you, you enjoy them nice little cushion chairs and, and you get all, all, all the amenities of, of being connected to a local church, but you don't put in. And here, I need to get to the place where I need to graduate past giving. And there's a group of people that's in here that have graduated. You, and that's why you're saying, Pastor, I heard this. Pastor, I got this. I know this. Because you graduated, but God still wants to say something to you new. But here, can I tell you, I got to get to the place where I'm not talking about this and struggling with this any, any, anymore. You, you ought to get your giving statement with your fifty thousand dollar year making sale, and look at them five hundred dollars you gave for the whole year, and challenge yourself. And then when you look at five hundred dollars on a giving statement, you say, "Ooh, I gave a lot of money." Compared to what? An offering? You gave some off. You, you're a consistent giver. You're not a consistent tither. You, you can be a consistent giver. Which you look at your, you made sixty thousand dollars a year, and then you look at you look at that. Oh, I gave a thousand dollars to that church. That's not a tithe. <laughs> if, if I made 60000 women smart people. If I made $60,000 a year, how much should my tithe be for the year? 6000 6, Y'all are smart, class. Y'all say, should I be 6000 a year? We get our giving statement, and we see, we see a couple of coins on there. We're like, oh, Lord, I, I, I gave something. <laughs> Compared to what? Your tips? <laughs> Compared to what? Your part-time gig? It's not off of it's not off of the whole, but here can I tell you I got I got to learn I got to stop playing games with God and act as if God is crazy. Y'all act sometimes we act like God slow and we just be like like we like we, like we know what it is that He does, He desire for us to do and then we act as if we act as if we just gonna keep on just doing what it is that God has already instructed us to do. But I'm trying to challenge you. Come on, we're not. It's not a beat down. Come on, this is a pick up. Come on, this is a pick up. This is this is exposed. Tell me the truth, Pastor. Tell me what I need to do. Tell me what I need to know so I can. 
can do better. So I want to challenge you. I, we got something around here we call the 90-day tithing challenge. It's the only place in the Bible that God say, prove me and put me to the test. I challenge you for 90 days. If every time you get an income, every time you get a check, every time something hits your hand, I challenge you to type it to the Lord and return it to the Lord and give it to the Lord. I promise you you'll never go back. I promise you God will meet you. I promise you God will, will speak something to you because here there's something that needs to be something needs to be said and something needs to be done about that here can I tell you here so not only that so what's the purpose of this because also I want to I want to fund our expansion project I want to I want to fund our expansion project that's, what, that's why we're doing this well we just don't we just don't roll out of bed and stuff just happen no we got to do we got to teach and we have to instruct and we have to grab the word of God it is it is repetition 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 is the key to all learning it's the mother of all learning so when we talk about our expansion project our goal totally over the whole entire thing is six hundred thousand dollars for the goal for as relates to what we're trying to do as relates to the parking lot the parking lot didn't work out the way we want to work out but we ain't finna waste no more money out there we're the parking Lot, and then we trying to renovate this facility, renovate that room, the dome out there, do whatever we need to do. This is our expansion project. So with that, there was individuals that this year that said we need we need a boost. As I as I have a I have an individual that come and ask me every now and then, they say, Pastor, I need a boost. I need a boost. He, he's from out of the country, and every now and then he hit me up. And say, I need a boost. We need a boost. We need a boost. And I said, Well, I got with you. You got the jumper cables. It gets the jumper cables. The heat, that's not the that's not the kind of boost he's talking about. But here, in order to kind of get us a boost in order to give us a boost we, we want to give above and beyond that's what expansion project is it's above and beyond and so let me apologize to all the first time visitors it's not the church that always talk about money but once a year we do this and we, we put everybody on the same playing field so don't don't think this is a church that you know, he go he's just trying to get in our pocket no god is trying to give us some instruction he want the word to get in my heart so then he can get that out your pocket so here look let me tell you what what we need to do when it comes down to our one give me do you have my other flight there we go thank you so much so so we had we had we, we we're asking for 25 people to give at least two thousand dollars this year at least 25 somebody start coughing right there right along in there <laughs> <laughs> right, we asked for twenty. We asked for twenty-five to give at least two thousand. We asked for fifty people to give at least a thousand. Give us a stat. We just want one stat. That's a stat. That's a stat. And then we asked for five. We asked for one hundred and fifty people to give five hundred. That's 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 sacrificial giving. That's not my tithe. This is sacrificial gift, and so and so I know I know I know you've been getting your little your little increase. I know you've been getting your little this and your little, your little oh stem it stem it gone stem it going to Ukraine right now. So just stem stem it gone, and we want we praying for them, and we want God to move in that because I'm not not being funny, but you see they just approve something else, approve the proof. So there go your stem. So stem it stem it not coming your way. But here can I tell you in, income income tax did though. But before but before but before you before you get that that new TV. Before you go to the car lot, can you swing by 1989? <laughs> we're asking, we're asking, boy, y'all getting real thick in here, getting real tired, real, real thick. We ask, we ask for individuals, I want to stretch you this year to give over and above your type $2,000 a thousand dollars or five hundred dollars in order for us to get this done and that's in order for us to do this it's going to take all of us doing it together let me let me let me keep on going so where we stand where do we stand right now we stand right now in our core in our expansion project we're sitting about twelve thousand come on put it up for me twelve thousand four hundred and seventy five dollars our expansion project twelve thousand four hundred fifty so that, so that's good but we got a long way to go we got a long but that's good thank you for your giving thank you for your seeding thank you for what you're doing and we're gonna we're gonna keep on we're gonna keep on going so let, let me let me tell you where, where, where you are where, where, where are you as it relates to your giving and where, as it relates to your tithing we already told you the tithing and on last week come on you gotta get I, I laid the foundation last week I I, I kind of I, I laid out what giving and what tithing all that means Old Testament and what we do as a new testament testament church but we just believe over in these parts 1989 Dunn Avenue we just kind of have a consensus that we're going to agree to type to the Lord and type just seems simply means a tenth we're going to give God a tenth one tenth if I got ten God get one it's just that it's just that simple and so here we have three different types of givers that listen to me we got the committed folk that type come hell or high water we got the uncommitted givers that say I'm not finna give y'all a dime we got the uninformed people that say if you teach 
teach me, then I'll level up. That's who I'm after. I'm after the uninformed and the uncommitted. That when you hear the word Lord, you'll move over into being committed to doing what God has called you to do as relates to being a person that loves God. I can't love God and don't ever give to him. I can't love God and don't ever give to his work. I have to make sure that I put my money where my mouth is. Here, can I tell you that God desires for us to be able to hear what God says in, in, in the word? Because here, again, I said this last week and I'm going to say it again because, because re repetition is the mother of all learning. I'm going to say it again. That here, when you look at the gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, those are synoptic, means similar. When we look at the gospels, it's estimated by the theologians, one out of every six verses deal with money. Money is mentioned in some shape, some form, some, 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 some derivative. They, they talk about money. When you read Jesus' parables, we're going to unpack a parable today. When you look at his parables, here it is, and you see that he continues to talk about money again and again and again. Out of, out of 40 parables that the Lord told, listen to me closely, one out of every three of them he dealt with money. Our use of money, the, the, the person and their money, our relationship with money. Again, 500 verses on prayer. Less than 500 on faith, but 2,000 of them on money. And here it is. We, we say we don't want to hear about it because people are trying to get something from us. No, that's a, bad, that's a bad mentality. When you look at this parable that Jesus is discussing today, we must, we must got to grab the fact that Jesus was a parabolic teacher. And when we understand parables and the essence of parables, it's essential to you and our understanding what the Lord is teaching. In this particular parable, many say this is a very difficult parable but understand and I'll tell you as we continue to go but but parables are just simply this look at this parables are simple stories with a heavenly meaning we talk about parables it's just a story it's a simple story with a heavenly meaning but but even 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 further than that Jesus would speak and teach in parables because he desired to hide the truth from unbelievers there was a lot of unbelievers. There's a lot of people that just kind of came just to hear what Jesus was saying. And they were looking to hear what he said so they can trap him up. And when they trap him up, they could be able to kill him, which they ended up doing. So there was a lot of individuals that were not coming for the right reasons. And they would come to be able to hear what he's saying. So Jesus would, would veil the truth in a parable. But yet and still it was a hidden truth to those in darkness. But it was light to those who desired to know God. Listen to me close. This is how God would use parables. It was something that was clear that he was saying in the parable. It was something that he was trying to articulate because it was individuals that just simply did not want to hear. But Jesus would give them the truth wrapped up in a parable so it can make application to our lives. Even in this chapter that we're looking at in Luke chapter 16, the previous chapter in chapter 15, Jesus gave three parables. One after another. He talked about the lost sheep. He talked about the lost coin, and he talked about the lost son. That's the, that's the lost. Somebody say lost, lost, lost. That, this is the lost chapter. He's a, somebody lost a sheep, left the 99 and went and got the one. The, a woman lost her coin. She swept the whole house. The baby looked for the coin, and the lost son is a story of the prodigal son. And Jesus told those parables. Don't miss this. This is the whole point of the message. Jesus began to tell these parables because I told you that the Pharisees were around. The religious leaders were around. They just wanted to hear. And they were upset about the way that Jesus dealt with unsaved people. They didn't like how the sinners liked Jesus. They didn't like that. And so he began to tell parables about, about lost sheep, about a lost coin, about a lost son. And he was directing his attention to them because their heart wasn't right towards the lost. Y'all hear me? I'm going to say it one more time. He began to tell these parables in Luke chapter 15 about the, all these lost individuals because the people who had the word of God, the people who knew God, they didn't care about the people that was outside the kingdom. So Jesus told these parables, told these, these, these stories with a heavenly meaning to show them the heart of God towards the lost. And here, what, what am I telling you, my friend? I'm telling you that you and I who love the Lord Jesus Christ, you and I who are, who are believers, who are Christians, we ought to have a heart for the lost. We ought to care about people who don't know the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why pastor asked you to bring somebody. That's why pastor asked you to pass out a car and bring people here, bring people there. Because we care. We, we care about the law so Jesus told these stories in chapter 15 what's the what one word to summarize that 15 
Lost. That's right. That's a chapter of the lost. But look at look at St. Luke 16, 1. I need y'all to follow me. Y'all the smart class. Follow me today. Luke 16, 1 says, he also said to the disciples. Mm-hmm. So, so, so he's, he's not talking to the, the Pharisees and the Sadducees anymore. We're not talking to the religious folk anymore. He's talking to who? The disciples. He's talking, I heard you. He's talking to us. He's talking about us and he's talking about us, we. He's talking about you and I. He's talking about the disciples. And listen to what he's saying. He, he begins to talk to them about the people. He's beginning to talk to the people of God. And this is what I'm this is what I'm learning about certain subject matters. And this is why people really don't get it. Because some things are for the people of God. Something just don't make sense to individuals who don't know the Lord Jesus Christ. And Jesus was talking to them about their relationship with God. And let me just be honest with you. If you don't have a relationship with God, there's some things that I've said already and some things that I'm going to say you can't get with. If you don't have a relationship with God, you can't understand even what I'm talking about because some things are just for for the people of God. See, 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 membership in the body has its privileges and God will only. Oh, the Bible says in Amos, I think it's Amos. Oh, my God. He said he reveals his says Amos chapter three, verse seven. He, re- he reveals his secrets to the prophets. God gives his word to individuals who are who are in fellowship with him. And so look, look, here's my text. Look what the why, why, what, look how the Pharisees respond to what Jesus was trying to tell them in Luke chapter 16 verse 14. The Pharisees who were what? Lovers of money. Heard all these things. Heard what all things about how our heart is supposed to be about money. How our, we're not supposed to put money above people. We're not supposed to put money and things and stuff over and beyond the work of God and the things of God. But because they love money more than they love God, they heard these things and ridiculed him. What, what, what does ridicule mean? If you look at it in the, in the original, ridicule just simply means they, they turn their nose up. And that's what some folk doing now. You sitting there talking about some money? How dare you? We're in the middle of a pandemic and you're asking people to give $2,000. How can you sit here and that? Don't you know all these bills? Uh, I'm a child of destiny. I have bills. Bills, bills. You, you don't, you don't understand what I, what I'm going. How can you? Oh, look at that preacher up there with his, with his little outfit on and his little, his little nice little car and all of his little nice smelling cologne and he's just asking for money and trying to get in your pocket and, and look at you just like merrily, merrily, let's go on your way, just following him and just doing what is he saying? No, no, no. People turn their nose up and they only turn their nose up to what it is that we're talking about and speaking about because here, give me the previous verse, give me my text. The previous verse says this, because they were lovers of money. This type of teaching only offends you when your heart isn't right towards God. When money has so much of a grip on me, the way it infuriates me to hear anybody talk about some money when I feel like it's unnecessary, I might need to check my heart. Because it really, it really reveals where I am. And this is why Jesus is saying what it is he's saying here because he's saying, you know what? The people of God, this is why he's giving them a parable because a parable was to individuals. It was giving them hidden truth. It was a truth to the people of God. And he says, look, the people of God don't operate like this. If you love the Lord, you don't mind giving to God. And that's why we're under new management. I used to act that way. I used to think all oh, preachers was pimp. I used to say what's mine is mine. I work hard for my money. I work hard for my money. I'm going to do what I want to do. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a big wheels keep on turning. Proud Mary keep on burning. Rolling. I'm rolling down the river. I'm trying to do what I, what I need to do. Ro- rolling. <laughs> rolling. <laughs> rolling. <laughs> rolling. <laughs> ooh, 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 ooh. Uh, anyway. Yes. Every time I, I ain't, ain't going to play with you. Let me, I ain't going to play. I ain't going to do it. Let me go. Let me go. Let me go. Let me go. What, what, what's, what, what is pastor telling you? Pastor is telling you. We used to roll like that. But since we're under new management, I don't think that way anymore. I don't live that way anymore. My life is not about me because I'm under new management. Can pastor teach you something today? I'm trying to teach you today. I'm under new management. What does this mean? Under new management simply means controlled by a different person or people than before. We're controlled by a different person. Lord, the devil used to tell me to keep everything to me. The devil used to tell me to just be selfish and be stingy. Don't give nobody nothing. That's what the devil used to tell me. 
Oh, but now that I'm under new management, oh, I'm controlled by somebody else. And now I don't do what I want to do. I do what God told me to do. The devil tell me not to forgive. The devil tell me not to love, but I'm under, I'm under new management. Look at these synonyms for, for under new management or control. Look, it means to charge or to care another direction. This is what God is saying. Under new management, I'm under different charge. I'm under different care. I'm under different direction. Who am I talking to? What the people of God are? I'm under different leadership. I'm under different control. I'm under different control governing. I'm governing. I'm under different ruling, command, superintendent, supervision, overseeing, conduct, handling, guidance, and operation. I move differently now because I'm a child of God. I move differently. And this is what God is trying to say to us because here, listen to me closely. Because I'm trying to do the best I can, Sister Cecilia. Can I tell you here, God desires for all of us to know that this is, this is different. Here, so what, people can't understand this. So what are y'all talking about in here? Talking about tithing. What y'all talking about? Free will, offering, sacrificial, gift, 33 strong, 43 strong. Uh, what are y'all talking about? Have y'all lost y'all mind? Look what, Paul, look what Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. Paul says, but the natural, non-spiritual man does not accept or welcome, look at this, or admit into his heart the gifts and teachings and revelations of the Spirit of God. Can I say it to you plainly? When you don't know the Lord Jesus, you're not even receiving what God is trying to say. And you can't wrap your mind around it. Paul says they don't even receive it for they are folly, oh, meaningless nonsense to him. And he is, in, oh my God, he's incapable of knowing them. I can't, even, I can't even mentally ascend to something that God is revealing for me to do whenever it is that I'm not a child of God. And this is why, this is why he can't play church. This is why he can't take the church bus to hell. This is why he can't be a member of somebody in the church and not know the Lord Jesus Christ. The important thing is for you to be a part of the body of Christ. And when you're part of the body of Christ, you'll be able to understand. This is what Paul is saying. They don't, they don't understand. It's silly. Oh, it's silly and absurd for somebody to forgive somebody who is purposely trying to destroy me. And the Bible telling you to turn the other cheek. I heard one brother say, well, I ain't in the Bible. Talking about the Bible say turn the other cheek. Say, it's silly for the world to say turn the other cheek. It's silly and absurd for somebody to still be showing up every day and doing my best on my job even when I'm overlooked and for the promotion and everybody know I should have gotten the promotion. It's silly for me to show up every day and bring my best. It's absurd to do that. It's silly and absurd to be loving a spouse who won't love me back. It's silly and absurd to be giving my hard earned money to something that seemingly I'm not getting nothing in return. Oh I, it may seem silly. Oh it may seem foolish but Paul said in 1 Corinthians 4 and 10 we are fools for Christ's sake oh I, I'll be a fool for Jesus any day oh don't you look at me like that in that tone of boy you were running behind that man oh you listen to everything he said I love you baby I'll never leave you baby you okay uh-huh okay uh-huh tell me more tell me more okay uh-huh you were listening to everything he said and you were just a fool and you know that was Tina say auntie Tina again you know I'm a fool you know I'm in love you do what you do if you're such a good man uh uh y'all don't know nothing about that I'm trying to tell you don't be sitting there talking about oh you never been I ain't nobody fool that girl told you you're the only one for me baby I love you I love she took oh lord have mercy way before lady C I took my little hard earned money and bought somebody a little ring and I, I presented it to them at one day little party she took my ring and broke up with me the next day I was my heart would hold her I said, oh god can I have my ring back y'all ain't gonna help me but still took my little my little I'm about no jewelry now I'm just a goon now I don't roll like that no more and I'm trying to tell you here because here I was a fool. And not because I serve the Lord, you want to tell me, oh, that's foolish. Not because, oh, I, because I love, you're going to tell me it's foolish. No, the devil is a liar. Oh, this is not drinking the Kool-Aid. This is not being brainwashed. This is not manipulation. Oh, this is faith in God and faith in his word. And if God said it, that settles it. I wish y'all preaching in here. Why won't y'all push me, please? So listen, I'm under... I'm under new management. I'm under new management. I'm trying to do the best I can. I'm under new, I'm under new management. I'm under new management. Why, why am I under new management? I, I, don't, I don't roll like that no more. I don't flow like that no more because I, I'm a child of God. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things pass away. Behold, all things become new. And so I refuse. Y'all hear me? I refuse to mishandle my moment. I couldn't do a good job last week. Worship wrecked the place. I didn't even get, I didn't get it set up my message the way I needed to. And so I had to redo. God gave me another chance. I'm so glad about it. So here, when I'm under new management, I refuse to mishandle my moment. I, I don't know, I don't know about you, but you have to be intentional about living. 
and I can't afford to mishandle where God has me. Lord have mercy. Let, let me tell you about Luke 16 and 1. The Bible said there was a rich man who had a manager. This brother, this brother who, who was rich, he had a manager. This brother was a baller. He was a shot caller, 20-inch rims on the Impala. This brother, this brother was a baller. He wanted it my way. <laughs> Lord have mercy. This brother, this brother was, this brother was, how you know he was a baller, bro, Pastor? Because he had somebody working for him. <laughs> He had somebody working for him, and the accounts that this brother was working for him, these were not no little $20 accounts. This brother was very wealthy, and because he was very wealthy, he hired a manager. Because he had a lot, he decided to bring somebody on board to be able to help, be able to do what it is that needs to be done for the success and the fruitfulness of his business. I told you last week what a household manager was. A household manager is a trusted servant who controlled the management of another person's property, finances, or household affairs. This is what this manager was doing. And listen, this is what Pastor Kobe is trying to say so you can follow me throughout the whole message here God has hired all of us to be his managers God has hired us God owns everything the Bible said the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof and those and they that dwell therein so God has hired all of us to be his manager and what do I mean by being his manager the way God said I'm going to let you be able to control or to oversee my property the finances and household affairs in other words I own it all but I'm going to let you be responsible for some of it and when you're responsible for some of it it needs a glory it needs a glorify glorify me Lord don't make me work hard y'all can I tell you here that there's a steward provided for all the other individuals in the house this brother managed your resources this brother was very very important but listen this is what God is trying to tell us that this chapter emphasizes us and this parable emphasizes us that this truth somebody say this truth life is a stewardship that's all I'm trying to tell you. Life is a stewardship. I know you, I know you got your little checkbook and you be trying to go over your little, all your little bills and all that stuff. No, 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 no. That's, a, that's one part of stewardship. But like God has entrusted all of us to be stewards. To be, to be stewards. And here God has given us all of these things so we can steward them properly. James 1.17 says every good gift and every perfect gift. Y'all don't mind the Bible, right? I'm a Bible teacher. Y'all don't mind the Bible, right? Every, every good gift and every perfect gift. Where's the good? The Bible says it comes from where? Above coming down from who the father of light in whom there's no variation or shadow due to change in other words he doesn't change God is good he reigns on the just as well as the unjust so everything I have it came from God that's what Paul said in 1 Corinthians 4 17 he says what do you have that God hasn't given you I know you went to work I know you you rolled up your sleeves I know you got your degrees you got more degrees than a the thermometer I know you worked hard you got your 25 years on the job I know you came up with your own down payment I know you the one got your credit right. I know you knew how to do your score and then get it to pay you, get a credit card, but run it up, then pay it every month. They're about to build up. I know you did all of that, but God said, everything you got, I gave it to you. No matter where you live, I gave it to you. No matter what you have, I gave it to you. Everything you know, I taught it to you. Wherever you are, whoever you are, I made you to be that. So everything comes from God. So if it came from him, why don't I give to him? <laughs> Preach, Pastor Kobe. It's a little thing over there that y'all... Is that, does that work over there? Yeah, okay, I wasn't sure. Okay. There's something there. I know. If you hit it, it'll, it'll make some noise or something. But I'm preaching that hard. My God. I tell you, so, 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 I refuse to mishandle my moment. I refuse to miss, I refuse to be in a place that whenever it is that God has stationed me in this time, in this space. We're in the kingdom for such a time as this. Not to just be glued to the television to try to figure out what's going on over there in, the, in Eastern Europe. We pray for Russia. We pray for Ukraine. We pray for what's going on. But God has me in the kingdom not to be a quiet observer. But God has me in the kingdom where I can pray and say, God, stop Putin, Lord. I need you to stop those tanks and stop those missiles and stop. I need to be praying, not for me just to feel bad, but God has me here so I won't miss my moment. What's a moment? A moment is a very brief period of time in your life. Or a moment is just a very period of time, however long you live. A very, a, period, a very brief period of time, an exact point in time. I'm trying to tell you, my friend, this brother was a manager. And God has made all of us managers. And you won't 
won't be a manager forever. You have a brief moment of time, and I got to make it work with what I have to work with. You only got a little window of time. I don't care how old you are, how young, how old, how in between you are. You only got a little bit of time. I don't care how great Michael Jeffrey Jordan was with his 10 scoring titles, six MVPs, five and six finals MVPs, five uh, from the season MVPs, two time slam dunk champion, two time oh, defensive player of the year. He only had a window to do what he needed to do. I don't care how great Kobe Bean Bryant was. He only had a window. Joe Montana had a window. Oh, Patrick Mahomes has a window. Oh, it doesn't matter how great these individuals are. They only have a little bit of time. William, Shakobi, Nesbitt III. I only got a little bit of time. I don't know what your name is, but God only gives you a little bit of time. The way you can be able to be who it is that God has called you to be. And for you to do what God has called you to do. You only get a little bit of time. Oh, my God. Wait, wait, wait. With stewards, <laughs> God, God, I told you last week, with stewards, I, I, got, I got to deal with my time. Why, why, why you keep talking about what happened? Why, why you keep talking about what's going on and what you lost and who left and what you don't got and where you desire to be? Why don't you work with what God has given you? Why don't you work in the moment that you are and love God and honor God and steward your time? I told you we're called to steward our time. Remember that last week? You steward your time. We're called to steward our gifts that God has given us. We're called to steward the gospel. We're called to steward our resources. We're called to be a good steward over what it is that God has called us to be a steward over all you that are watching me online in the parking lot, YouTube, Facebook. God has called us to steward what it is he's given us. I refuse to mishandle my moment. No, I'm going to take care of my moment. I'm going to do what God has called me to do. And I'm going to honor God with my, with my resources in particular. Why is that? Because Deuteronomy 8.18 says, God, look at this. God tells the people of God, you shall remember the Lord your God. For it is he. Who gives you power to get wealth? Yeah. Oh, I know you got your nice house and got your nice car. You got all that stuff. God said, I gave you the power to get it. Yeah. And don't you ever forget. Uh, don't you ever forget about me. And God said, don't you forget about me. I gave you the power to get what you got and to drive what you drive and live where you live. And God cares. God cares about how I honor him with my money. He said, wherever your heart is, you'll also find your treasure. Where your heart is, that's where your treasure. That's where we're gonna we're gonna deal with that in the days to come. And so 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 let me say let me say it to you plain. This is what Pastor is trying to tell you today. God is concerned how I give. He's concerned. What what does what does it matter? He don't need my money. He sure doesn't. He wants your heart. He doesn't need your money. He's God all by himself. He's, he doesn't need your money, but he's concerned about how I give. Oh, God is watching what I put in that envelope. God is watching when I mark tithe. When I know this isn't my full tithe. God is concerned, old pastor, you're just trying to make this up because you're trying to get some money. Y'all all know your boy better than that. Give me Mark chapter 12, verse 41. It says, and he sat down opposite being Jesus. He sat down opposite the treasury and watched the people put money into the offering box. Oh, y'all ain't read that verse, huh? Ain't in there no more. Y'all, y'all ripped that right on about it. Huh? Y'all like, dog, oh, that's the apocrypha, that's the lost book. No, that, that's, 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 that's Mark chapter 12, verse 41. The Bible says, he being Jesus sat down on the opposite side of the treasury and watched what they put in the offering. Many rich people put into large sums. Look at verse 42. And a poor widow came and put into two small copper coins which, which make a penny. Verse 43 says, and he called his disciples and said to them, truly, I say to you, this poor widow has put more than all those who are contributing to the offering box. This, ble this verse blesses me because Jesus is not only monitoring my gift and monitoring what I'm giving. He's not only watching me, but he's also watching my faith behind my gift. Because here, if we read this verse of scripture, we'll be like, all she got is a little two bit of mice. Her little two bit of mice doesn't matter. No, no, baby, don't give your life. No, baby, don't give that to that church. No, baby, don't do that. No, Jesus said, no, I'm, I'm watching your gift and the giving that you're doing. Even when you don't, even in the season of struggle, even in the season of meagerness, you still got to, I don't see Jesus going in the offering box and giving it back to her. Oh, why would you ask people to give when they don't got it? Pastor Kobe don't ask nobody to give when they don't got it. Pastor Kobe don't ask nobody to give off of your unemployment check. Pastor Kobe don't ask nobody to give whenever it is that you, when you're on file bankruptcy. Pastor Kobe don't ask, but 
God sure does. Oh, God said this woman put a little bit in and she got a whole lot out. Oh, I wish this widow was here that fed the prophet Elijah. All she had was a little bit of oil and a little bit of barrel. And God didn't say, no, keep that for yourself. But no, the Bible said she took that little bit of jar and took that little bit of oil, took that little bit of meal and fed the man of God. And she ate every day. Lord, have mercy. I'm looking for somebody in here that's talking about you only got a little bit. If you only got a little bit, that's all you need. If all you got is a little bit, you struggling and straining. God say, give me your little. Put your faith on that little and see me open up the windows of heaven and give you a blessing. The Bible says, the Bible says, Jesus, watch this sister give. Man, we, we caught this, man. So oftentimes we be wanting to give. Like, no, don't get that. No, no, you struggle. Don't get that. That's how we got out of debt. That's how we got out about to lose our home and lose our car. We almost lost everything. And my wife said, Holy Ghost say, so our way out. Yeah. I said, I don't got that kind of faith. I don't got that kind of Holy Ghost. We're three months behind on everything. She said, so your way out. Oh, and we started with $20, started with $50, started with a whole check. And we kept giving and giving and giving and giving. And can I tell you, I won't go back. I've never been back there no more. Y'all ain't going to help me up in here. I'm trying to say because when you trust God with your little, he'll breathe on your little and he will give you something. He'll give you something. I mean, uh, can, I, can I let y'all in on a little secret? Let y'all in a little secret. Can I tell you a little secret? I am preaching much better than y'all responding right now. I'm telling you, I, just, I just want to let y'all in on that. If you didn't mind. <laughs> just in case you was wondering. It's like, I, wonder, I wonder, is this preaching? I wonder, is he preaching? Just in case you was wondering that. I'm telling you, I'm, yeah, yeah, I'm preaching. Yeah, I am. I'm trying to do the best I can. Whoever, whoever said it over there. That was, that was you, Sister Vaughn. Did you say that, Mrs. Vaughn? Let me, let, me hit, let, me hit, let me hit you with this real quick, Sister Vaughn. Since you, since you said that, since we got, these little, we got this pro, the problem with gas today. Let me tell you, that's a $25 prepaid gas card. I appreciate you, Sister Vaughn. Uh, you, you stood up like that for uh, Sister Ariel. Come here, Sister Ariel. Come here, Sister Ross. Come here, come here, Jew. Come here. Let me, let me bless y'all with this. right. You know, you know why we don't mind? We don't mind sowing and giving like this because God bless us like this. Go get you some gas. Go and ride. Look, go and dance a little bit off of that because God is good like that. And when I celebrate somebody else, that means I'm next in line. That means God trying to do something for me. All right. The Bible says, <laughs> let me go, let me go. I gotta go, I gotta go, I gotta go. Get some gas. Get some gas on us. Get some gas on us. And you drive all the way from Middleburg every week, Sister Shan. Come get you some gas, Miss Shan. Get you some gas. Where the Lamar's at? Don't y'all, don't y'all drive all the way. Come, come get you. Come get you some gas, Sister Sharon. And take this one right here for Sister Lamar and for and for Sharonda Lamar. Cause they drive. They, they, listen, listen to this right. Listen to right here. They come all the way from out there, in Middleburg. They don't drive with separate cars. They drive their own vehicle. Go and get y'all some gas on us. Get you some gas on us in Jesus' name. You dancing on the cheek, dancing on the gas, and y'all can't go up, 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 up. Sister Lamar, Sister Lamar. All right, sit down. The Bible says. So, so listen, listen to me, listen to me. We, we back directly. I promise you, I'm gonna give you a chance. I promise you. Thank y'all so much. Thank y'all so much. Thank you so much. I appreciate y'all. Y'all pushing me, boy. I appreciate y'all. Y'all doing that there. I appreciate you. So cool over there with them shades. I'm gonna give you. A, no, I'm not. You guys got them shades on. So cool. That boy got his sunglasses on. It, that's, that's, that's how it's hot up here. It's hot. It's the, the light of Christ up here. I, re, I don't got time to play. I'm almost out of time. Look here. I refuse to mishandle my moment. I refuse to misappropriate my means. This is why, this is why we are under new management. Look, look, look at St. John. Saint, Saint John not here. I'm making sure y'all pay attention. St. Luke. <laughs> Luke chapter 16, verse 1. And, and look at this. He said, and charges was brought to him. Him that this man, being the steward, was wasting his possessions. The steward that was working for this man... Was wasting the man's was wasting the man's possession. In other words, I, I explained this a little bit last week. Wasting is to squander, to scatter, to distribute money loosely over an area, to use carelessly, extravagantly, or to have no purpose. Let me just tell it to you, plain what Pastor's trying to say today. I'm trying to tell you, 
That God is saying that some of us are not wealthy because we're wasters. Some of us want more, but we waste what God has given us. Some of us misappropriate what we have. And don't sit up and tell that lie. Say, if you made more, you'll give more. You lying. That's what Jesus said. Not me. Jesus said later in this chapter, he said, if you're not faithful over little. He said, you won't be faithful when you got a lot. I can give thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars now because I gave them my 60. When, you, when you're not faithful over a little bit, you're not going to give him more. This was, I told you in chapter 15, what word describes chapter 15? Law, the loss. There was a lost chapter. And at the end of that chapter, there was, a, there was a son. And we call him what? The prodigal son. Prodigal means waster. Jesus gave them that parable because he was describing to them their heart towards the lost. And was showing them you care more about your stuff than you care about people. And here, this is, we talk about the prodigal son in chapter 15. In chapter 16, this is a prodigal steward. So you never left home like the prodigal son. But you never, you never stewarded what it is that God has given you. You didn't go to a far country. You right out east and you haven't done what it is that God... <clears throat> That's called you to do. And, 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 I, and I love this. And I got I to slip this in just because I'm equal opportunity. I got to slip this in. Let me ask you a question. Get out your business. I'm gone. Let me ask you this. Are you a waster at work? What, what do I mean? See, some, some of you God has elevated in the place the way you kind of oversee some things. And because it's not your money, you spend it loosely. And my, my wife can tell you, we'll go places and just say, go to restaurants and things of that nature. And somebody try to give me something for free, I won't accept it. And I'll say to myself, she'll never work for me. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me in here. I, if I'm the business owner and I got somebody standing at the counter giving away free stuff that's not yours, this is not your stuff. You're not Miss McDonald. Come on here. You're not Mrs. King. This is not your stuff. You can't give away people's stuff and say, well, it's all right. It'll be all right. They good. They got it. They got plenty. I dropped a penny on the ground and they be like, late. I was at Burger King yesterday. RJ got my other two or four and I just got my, I wanted my ham, egg, and cheese for sandwich. He got my sausage because I didn't eat the sausage. I knew somebody else was gonna want it. And here, man, give me the chain and drop the penny. Say, oh, it's just a penny. It's my penny. I opened up the door and got my penny off the ground. I'm not a waster. Y'all ain't gonna help me up here. It's my, don't be telling me what to do. My penny is mine. If we get 99 more, I got a dollar. But some of y'all be on them folk job, be using their stuff and be printing your stuff and be buying stuff and be splurging and, don't, and just be being all frugal and don't, you, you don't even look. You, I, I get on them around here all the time about ordering stuff without even looking. You don't go and see if we got it. You're just doubling and doubling. And I often say this, they'll tell you, if it was your money, would you do that? Some of us wasting at work and we don't we don't monitor what we're giving you don't know that God is trying to test your heart God trying to test your integrity because it's only God will give you something of your own when you handle it properly somebody else says the only reason why I'm standing on this stage the only reason why y'all sitting in here listening to me right now and online is because I handled somebody else stuff right it's because I serve somebody else I opened up for somebody else I carry somebody else Bible I serve somewhere else that's the only reason why y'all here not because I'm so anointed I know the power of serving. Y'all gonna help me here. But some of y'all, y'all just waste and 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 here and you wonder why there's no wealth. But the Bible says we cannot be irresponsible with what God has given us. We, are, we shouldn't waste, but we should invest. Lord, have mercy. We should invest our time and invest our talent. We should be investing. Lord, have mercy. I'm going to plant something even when I can't see it. I need to plant. Even when they overlook me and overwork me and nobody sees what I do. I go above and beyond. God said, I still need to do what I need to do. It's not mine. But I need to treat it like it's mine. If you work somewhere, you ought to be shaming yourself, people of God. You work for somewhere, and you're cutting corners, and you're taking the people's stuff and doing all that, and you think that that's fine and cute, and y'all laugh about it. But can I tell you, God is watching you. You ought to treat that as if that was your company, your business. And when you do that, God will breathe on you and give you your own. Lord, have mercy. And that's why I say, I say it all the time, I didn't sow that. When I see something that I didn't sow, I didn't sow that. I ain't taking that. No, the devil is a lie. I didn't sow that. Hell, I don't believe in the power of sowing and reaping. I see. Can I hear? Look, look at this. Someone is sitting in the shade today because someone, give me that. Someone's sitting in the shade today. It's on the screen. Someone is sitting in the shade today because someone planted a tree a long time ago. Y'all listen to me. Someone is sitting in the shade today 
Because someone planted a tree a long time ago. We enjoy the pleasures of, the, of a shade tree, but we, we, we enjoying it off somebody else's energy, somebody else's work, somebody else planted that seed, and they're enjoying the shade of that tree. What am I trying to tell you? You don't know how the seeds you're sowing today is going to be blessing your generations to come, your children, your grandchildren, your great-great-grandchildren. They're going to be sitting up under a tree and enjoying the shade because of your faithfulness with what you've done. The Bible says in, in St. Luke 6, am I doing okay, y'all? Am I doing okay? I'm trying to do okay. I'm, I, I got to get to one point today. The Bible says that this brother, because he, 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 he chose to misrepresent his means or misappropriate his means, so the Bible says he got fired. He got fired. But, but can I tell you, I, the, the Lord in the text is not, it doesn't represent God. The, the Lord in the text does not represent God because he made a tactical error. He fired this brother and he let him keep working. He fired him. He said, he says to him, and, and Luke 16, read chapter 16 when we get a chance. He says to his brother, he says, go and I need you to give me, give me all of your records. Go man, and tell me exactly what you were doing. His brother didn't put up no fight. He didn't put up no argument. But he, he went back. And because he went back, because he went back, he got an opportunity to do some slick stuff. See, see, when, when, you, get, when you get fired up from, anybody ever got fired before? They'll get fired from a corporate job. They don't let you keep working for the rest of the day. Hey, they're going to take that badge right there. They're going to they gonna, say, oh, can I clean out my desk? No, we got it for you. We're going to put it in the box. Sometimes they so cold-blooded, so gangster, the box already sitting at the door when you get there. You know, you're like, why is my coffee mug and my pictures? And why is that? What is, what, y'all moving my desk? Yeah, we moving your desk. Come in. We got to talk to you. Come in. We got to talk to you. You don't finish your day out. And here, can I tell you, that's, I believe that's how we ought to do in the kingdom of God. Because when folks start smelling, they want to go somewhere. And I, I, I believe the Lord is my season is up over here. I believe my season is up. I, time, time me to go. I believe I'm not, I'm not growing the way I desire to grow. I want us to be a little more prophetical. I want us to be a little more powerful. And let us be a little more worshipful and all that. And, I, and then, they'll say, then, they'll say, then they'll say something to me. They'll be like, well, my last Sunday going to be from two months from now. I said, well, no, I'm, I'm with them. Can you, can you go, y'all help me here. Yeah. And, and it's, it was supposed to do, you, you're supposed, you're supposed to, when, you, when you leave, and nobody's ever going to leave us, and I just, I just speak that in Jesus' name, nobody's ever going to leave us, but hypothetically, if your cousin decided to leave their church, this is how you're supposed to do it. You're supposed to leave properly. Yeah. If, you, if, you, if your cousin leaves, none of y'all are going nowhere. Y'all going to be here till Jesus come back. Y'all are never going nowhere. But if you have your cousin and getting ready to leave their church, tell them to leave right. You, that, that man and that woman of God came to preach to you and get buried your dead, married your living, did your hatching, matching, dispatching, and you'll never say nothing to him. You just go on, just go on with the wind. Next time I see you, oh, I'm at, I'm at Reverend Bobo Church. You didn't leave right. <laughs> how how's you leave? Y'all don't like this, but this is past, this pastor. Look at this. Leave quietly. You don't need to go and be in campaigning around. Say, hey, you know, last night is my last day. It's my last day. You heard it's my last day. You heard this. It's my last day. You heard it's my last day. He's going around, going to my last day. You're on a farewell tour. It's my last day. You know 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 it's my last day. It's my last day. It's my last day. It's my last day. Now, y'all, you infected all these people around here. They weren't thinking about leaving. They enjoy I heard. And all of a sudden, they don't hear no more because they're trying to figure out, well, maybe my season up too. Maybe I need to be gone. Leave quietly. And how else? Leave quickly. Get your get, leave, 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 leave quickly. Don't be around. Don't be around infecting other folk. Get, get. Don't let the Lord and, and, and see. I'm, 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 I'm the guy. Listen to me closely. I'm, I'm, I'm the guy. I'm, I got to get out of here. Am I doing okay, y'all? This is a pastor in here. This brother, this brother messed up. This I knew this wasn't the Lord. This wasn't the Lord because the Lord wouldn't let this brother keep working. He kept working and ripped this man off. And some people we leave and they're angry, they're upset, they're frustrated, they're not growing or doing anything, and we just let them stay around. No, 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 leave quickly, please go. And what I do, I'm not the guy that's going to demonize people. Thank you for your service. Thank you for giving. Thank you for serving and how you did, to the capacity that you did and all that you did. I'm not going to say that you're a devil because you're leaving. No, I'm not. I'm just going to say get the devil from around here. That's all I'm going to say. Y'all don't like that kind of stuff because that's not loving. But Jesus, Jesus turned over tables and Jesus said, eat my flesh and drink my blood. They walked away and never followed him no more. Jesus didn't say, please come back. He didn't say that. The Bible says this brother was a manager. I got to go, y'all. This brother was a manager. And he says, what am I going to do? So he's, look what he says in verse 3. This is going to bless you. This is going to bless you. Look at verse 3. He says, the manager said to himself, he just got fired, y'all. What shall I do? Since my master is taking the management away from me, I am too strong. He said, I'm not strong enough to dig. I can't do no manual labor. I ain't finna go, go and work in no ditch now. I ain't finna go. 
I ain't even gonna go get, I ain't even gonna do no real job. That's what, but he's always there. And I am ashamed to beg. He didn't have a temptation. He said, I'm ashamed to beg. But he wasn't ashamed to steal. Isn't that amazing? He, he don't want to hold up a sign and say, we'll work for food, but he wasn't too ashamed to take some stuff from whatever he did. Look at, look at, I'm going to make sense. I'm, I told you I'm going to change how you feel about giving. John, in Luke 16, 4 said, I have decided what to do. He said, so when I am removed from management, people may receive me into their house. Say that with me. People may receive me into their house. Say that. People may receive me into their house. People may receive me into my house. He said, I'm going to make some moves Then whenever I get put out because he wasn't just a manager as a nine to five, he was living there. He says, when I get put out, I need somebody else to receive me. Verse 6 says, he said, a hundred, he said, no, no, verse, verse 5 says, so summoning his master's debtors one by one, he said to him, how much do you owe my master? Verse 6 says, he said, a hundred measures of oil. He said to him, take your bill, sit down, do it quickly, and write out 50. Wow. He went and cut, he cut the bill in half. Wow. And, and this is a real kind man. Anytime they're rushing you to do something. Even if you really want to do it, you need to go on and pump the brakes. That's a, that's a, that's a, that's a, that's a, that's a designated con, man. Y'all are going to help me here. I was driving, I was driving several, several years ago. This is probably like in 20, 2010, something like that. I'm driving down Dunn Avenue, and I'm saying, Lord, boy, I sure want an iPad. I sure want, I want an iPad so bad. I don't know what to do. I pulled into the gas station, put in the gas station, get some gas in the corner right there before 95. It was a shell back then. And pull up, and then all, all of a sudden, as soon as I'm getting my gas, somebody pull up, say, hey, yo. I should knew something was up right there. He said, hey, yo. Show me a box. She got that iPad. I said, look at God. I just was asking about that. I said, look at God. The Lord is my shepherd, but he know what I want. I was like, hey, man, I can. I said, let me check it out real quick. How much you want for it? He told me how much you want. I said, let me look at it. He said, man, no, no, man, you look at it. Come on, man, get the iPad. Get it done. Get it. Come I'm like, all right, all right, all right. I got nervous. I said, okay, all right, all right. All right. So I gave it to him. I'm, put, I'm looking around and all that stuff now. I'm saved, sanctified, Kentucky. Now, I didn't know. I know he just didn't get this from Best Buy now. I know. I know. It was, it was kind of hot. It was kind of hot. I had to put it down real quick. I got home. Open up that box, had a box of extension cords. Y'all ain't gonna help me up in here. And I said, that's exactly what you get, you big dummy. Sitting up here, got somebody. <laughs> oh, don't y'all look at me like that with all that hot meat in your freezer? Don't you look at me like that. Some of y'all got a tablet right now taking notes from the Bible. <laughs> My point is, when the devil know you want something, they were like, hey, when they got me like that, well, yeah, I got you, I got you. With the, with the, with the, when, your, when your heart, that's why, the, that's why the Bible said, listen to me, that's why the Bible says the, the love of money is the root of evil. And it opens up the door. I got duped because I got caught up. I got duped because I was convention. I got duped because I was, I was consumed by the lust of me wanting something. And some of us get there all the time. Just because you just want something, just got to have it. The brother said, sit down quick and write it down. Verse 7 says, then he said to another, how much do you owe? He said, 100 measures a week. And he said, take your bill and write our 80. Lord have mercy. He's just giving everybody a break. And this is what's going on. This brother is literally cutting all the bills down. And this is what's going on. I re- look, let me tell you about how, how we're under new management. Because here, I refuse to allow the minor to model meaningful actions. I got, to, I got to go. I'm way over time. I'm so sorry, y'all, but this is, I, just, I got to get this to you. Let me tell you. Oh, thanks so much. I appreciate you. Yeah. I, I, got, I, got, I, got, I got the model. I got the model. I, got, I can't let the minor. What do I mean by minor? This brother, this brother is a sinner. Y'all listen to me. Don't leave me. Look at verse 8. Look at verse 8. It says, the, the master commended the dishonesty. The dishonest manager, ma- ma- manager for his shrewdness. I got to slow down. The manager, the master, the master commended the dishonest manager for his shrewdness. The man who's getting burnt says, you know what? I, I commend what this brother's doing for his shrewdness. His shrewdness just simply means his good judgment, his common sense. What, 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 why is he commending him? That's why they say this is so confusing because the, 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 the master commends this guy. Why is he commending? He's not commending him for his, for, his, uh, for his fraud that he's committing. He's commending him that he understood, he knew, the manager knew that he needed to make a move. 
If I don't do something, I'm going to be on the street. If I don't do something, I'm going to be I'm gonna be poor. And here, they instead of him just sitting around, just waiting on something to happen, he made something happen. It was wicked. It was vile. But he made something happen. In other words, this is a good lesson from a bad example. And I'm trying to tell you that you and I can learn some things from individuals, even when they're bad examples. This brother sat around, and he didn't say, I'm just going to let somebody help me and bless me. I'm going to do what I need to do. Look what Jesus said. He picked it up in verse 8. He said, for the sons of this world, are more shrewd in dealing with their own generation than the sons of light. In other words, Jesus said, now here, somebody who's carnal, somebody who doesn't know me, love me, serve me, they got enough sense not to miss their moment. They got enough sense to do whatever they need to do to make sure that they'll be received later. And then here, you and I, they got the blood. You and I, they got the power. You and I, they got the word. We'll just sit around and won't do anything. I got to go. Y'all ain't like that. I thought that was good. This brother did whatever he needed to do. Oh, my God. Here it is. Here's my point. I'm, 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 here's my point. I will be resolute. It's one of my favorite. I love resolute. I'll be resolute to make friends with mammoth. I'll make friends with mammoth. Here it is. Verse 8. Here, verse 9, brother. Luke 16, 9. Listen to this. Listen to this. And I say to you, this Jesus make an application to, to the parable. Are y'all good? Y'all okay? All right. Make to yourself. Look what Jesus says. Friends of the mammoth of unrighteousness Jesus says make friends I gotta be resolute determined means determined resolute means determined means unwavering I gotta be resolute to make friends with mammoth mammoth means wealth Jesus says make friends with wealth make make friends with money and, and he's, he's not saying buy friends <laughs> he says make friends with money to get you some friends you're missing me. Don't, don't, don't go there. I know I already see y'all cutting across the field. Just listen to me. Listen, listen what Jesus is saying. Because this is where the world changes come in. The world changes series. Because again, he's talking. This, he, in chapter 15, he's talking to the Pharisees and the Sadducees and all these people about how, how they feel about the loss. And that's why we had chapter 15 was a lost pair. Lost pair. Then now we come to chapter 16. And now he's even amplifying the point even more and trying to show the people their heart towards money. Read all that when you get a chance. Again, the Pharisees in Luke 16, 14, their hearts, their hearts were on money. And Jesus was telling them that you, you and I are supposed to take our money. This brother who was a manager, he took his money. Many theologians suggest he really took his end of the deal. He took his, his compound interest, his, his, his commission and he cut it off and said you know what, I'll do without now so I can be able to have somebody to help me later. He took his commission off and said I'm going to give y'all a good deal and I'll go without. What's the point I'm trying to make? This individual had modeled something for us that we should do in our walk with God. We should get to the place to where we understand that my money is not going to buy me some friends but no I am to take my money take my wealth and here be able to finance it and be able to sow it into the kingdom of God that way I can have I can have some friends y'all y'all miss what I'm trying to say it makes sense in one second look what Warren Wisby said he said if God is our master then money will be our servant and we will use our resources to do the will of God but if God is not our master then we will become the servants of money and money is a terrible master in other words if God is my master I'll do whatever it is I need to do in order to let my money work for me I'm not going to be slave to my money I'm going to let my money work for me look at verse 9 he says so that when it fails money going to fail you're not going to always have money when you die you're not going to always have money when you leave here you're not going to always gonna have it when they fire you're not going to always have it he said when money fail and low it will they may receive you into the eternal dwellings this brother this brother good God Almighty this brother did without so somebody can receive him later and you and I need to do without here on this earth so somebody can receive us late y'all ain't gonna help me here this brother did what he needed to do so he can be received in the life to come and that's all pastor trying to tell you because money cannot be compared to what God has given us money cannot be compared to being given the blessings of the Lord money cannot be compared to eternal salvation money cannot be compared to the love that God showed us money cannot be compared to the joy that we have 
have. Money cannot be compared to the peace that we experience. Money cannot be compared to in the incorruptible inheritance that we have. All money cannot be compared to what God is doing in our life. So like this bad manager, he did without so he can be able to make some friends later. He cut their bill down and cut their bill down so when he needed them later, they'll be there. And God is trying to tell us that what we need to do is go without in the season. And we need to be able to sow some seed so whenever we get to heaven, Lord have mercy, we'll have, we'll have some friends. Oh, so I know they told you you can't take your money with you. Anybody heard that? Can't take your money with you. I never seen that. Uh, you haul at a cemetery. Oh, you can't take it with you, but you can send it ahead. Lord have mercy. I can't take my money with me, but I sure can send it ahead. I can't take it with me in that casket. Oh, but I can send it ahead. Oh, how we gonna send it ahead? By doing the work of the ministry. How we gonna do it ahead? He said they'll receive you in heaven. I'm trying to tell you, my friend, every dime you give, every time you sow a seed into this house, oh, God is saying you sending your money ahead. Every time you tie, you sending your money ahead. Every time you give sacrificially, you sending your money ahead. God said that you don't have to buy no friends here with your money, but the money that you spend, oh, my friend, it'll meet you in heaven. Somebody put your hands together. Give God some praise right long in there. I know I'm slapped out of time, but I got to celebrate at the end of this because the Lord want to say something to us. The Lord desire for you and I to be able to know how we roll under new management. Can I tell you that I said the hashtag of this message is 104. What do I mean by 104? Because it was 104 weeks ago the way the pandemic went global. It was this week two years ago we had our final in-person worship the way that we normally would do it. But y'all miss what I'm trying to say. 104 weeks later the Lord is still on the throne. 104 weeks later the Lord is still good. 104 weeks later the hand of the Lord is still on truth and love. I told y'all this a few months ago that one out of every five churches they're going to be shut down because of COVID-19. They're not coming back. They're not gathering anymore. But because you give and because you sow, you can't take your money with you. But you can send it ahead. I'm looking for somebody in here that say, Lord, I'm going to take what you give me and I'm going to send it ahead. I'm going to take what you give me and I know I got treasure, treasure up in heaven where moth and dust will not corrupt. So every time you give, you send in your money ahead for every soul we connect to God. You know that's why we're here, y'all, to connect people to God. So every soul we connect to God, you send in your money ahead. Every soul that we connect to that God-given purpose, you send in your money ahead for every person when we connect our church to the community you're sowing and sending your money ahead when we go to Callaway Cove when we go to Lakeside when we put up a tent out here every Wednesday when we go out there to the dome Matthew 25 alive you sending your money ahead is there anybody in here that say Lord I may not get it right here but I'm sending I'm sending my money ahead because I know you got a place I know you got a place for me I heard I heard Jesus say he said I go to prepare a place for you that where I am that you may be also I'm not buying my way into heaven I'm not buying my way into a mansion but when I get over there the Lord will bless me because every time we feed somebody every time we close somebody every time you take an envelope and you put it in that bucket you sending your money ahead y'all ain't gonna help me preach in here I'm looking for somebody that'll say Lord you can use me Lord I'll take my little and I'll sow it into the house we even go to Africa y'all we even go to India we even send our money to Brazil foreign mission I'm sending my money ahead come on y'all and stand on your feet and help me close this message I'm sorry I'm a little longer than I normally am but I want to give you this word I'm under new management so I do things differently I move differently I serve 
live differently I give differently I'm under new management and I say Lord you can take what I have and I'm gonna give it to you and when I give it to you you're gonna breathe you're gonna breathe on my little we give your name the glory for all that you've done we thank you Jesus for keeping truth and love we thank you Jesus for keeping us open we thank you Jesus for not letting us be shut down we thank you Jesus in the middle of a pandemic we still feeding people in the middle of a pandemic we still paying bills in the middle of a pandemic we still loving we still serving we thank you Jesus and whatever you do for truth and love you are gonna make it happen for me whatever I make happen for the house he'll take care of my house is there anybody in here that say Lord you can do it for me when I take care of the house take care of my baby take care of my children take care of my grandchildren heal my body come on y'all to give him some praise right there On behalf of everyone at Truth and Love Ministries, we want to thank you for joining us for our virtual worship experience. We want to thank you for your likes and your shares, your comments and your emojis. But we also want to invite you to partner with us as we continue to be the hands and the feet of the Lord Jesus Christ. You do know that he told us that we ought to feed the hungry, we ought to clothe the naked, and we ought to be the church. And you can help us to continue to do just that through your generosity. And there are three easy, safe, and secure ways that you can do just that. You can text the word T-I-L-JAX, one word, T-I-L-JAX, to the number 77977. You can go to our website, www.truthandlove.tv, or you can go to the Apple Store or the Google Play Store, search for Truth and Love Jax, Download our app and you can give that way. We thank you for your participation. We thank you for your generosity and we love you and we'll see you next time. Here comes the church. God bless you.